Hi everyone, good morning. Happy Wednesday to you. Welcome to Up With Krem. I'm Tim Pham. And I'm Channing Curtis. Well, hopefully this turns out to be a wonderful Wednesday yeah. for everyone. We're keeping the alliterations going this week. We like that. And we also like that the sun is rising a little bit earlier. We, we were taking a look at the live shot outside and Thomas, that uh, camera needs to be white balanced again yeah. because the color change. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's got really bright really quickly out there. Sunrise is 620 AM. And uh, if you missed that beautiful, like orangey sunrise, I did take a screenshot. You can find that on my Twitter page. But yeah, now that the sun's just coming around the corner, it really just makes the, <laughs> the whole sky look blue. Uh, so yeah, if that happens, uh, we need to white balance the camera because it looks just a little bit too hot at the moment. Hot in terms of just how, the, uh, how it's looking out there. But boy, is it gonna be sunny once we do get to sunrise, just 18 minutes away. But because of the clear skies, we are going to start out a little bit cool out there. 28 in Spokane and Coeur d'Alene, just 19 degrees in Deer Park. But thankfully, that sunshine will offset those cold morning temperatures very quickly today. Should get up to about 40 degrees even by 10 a.m. this morning. New from overnight, Elk Highway is now reopened between Havana and Broadway following a deadly crash last night. Police say a white sedan was going extremely fast westbound on Broadway Avenue. At the curve where Broadway turns into Elk Highway, the driver lost control of the vehicle. The sedan swerved into the lane of oncoming traffic and hit a truck head on. The driver of that sedan died at the scene and two others in the car remain in critical condition at this hour. The truck is has significant front end damage, but again, the driver was able to walk away and he was treated here at the scene and has been released. The small white sedan uh, it did significant damage to the car. Detectives from SPD's major crimes unit are now investigating. Well, President Donald Trump is back in Florida this morning with a criminal case number now attached to his name. He becomes the first American president to ever face criminal charges. Inside a Manhattan courtroom yesterday, Trump pleaded not guilty to 34 felony counts of falsifying business records. The 16-page indictment alleges Trump concealed hush money payments to three individuals threatening to reveal negative information about him during the 2016 election. They include an adult film star, a former Playboy playmate, and a Trump Tower doorman. Trump has denied any wrongdoing in the case. These are felony crimes in New York State. No matter who you are, we cannot and will not normalize serious criminal conduct. So far, the president has not been barred from publicly discussing the case, but was warned by the judge not to make statements that could incite violence. The next hearing in the case is scheduled for December 4th. It is 6.04 right now. Let's take a look at your morning rush. More news in less time. A man is accused of luring at least two women to secluded areas and then sexually assaulting them. Deputies say 23-year-old Jackson Parrott met the women outside of gas stations, then convinced them to get into his car. Detectives released these mug shots because they believe there could be other victims that have yet to come forward. Potential victims or anyone with more information is asked to contact the sheriff's office right away. Well, Washington State basketball star Muhammad Gay announced that he is entering his name into this year's NBA draft. The 6'11 forward was an all pac 12 first teamer this season, averaging over 14 points and 8 rebounds a game. This is Gay's second time entering his name into the draft. Draft projections currently have Gay going in the second round. And today, Idaho Central Credit Union will be holding a spring market at Riverfront Park. There will be more than 50 local vendors selling crafts and food. The market will also have a petting zoo and get this, even a pet fashion show. Can't wait to see that. Now the event is free to attend and is open to everyone. It gets started at noon and will last until 6 p.m. And that's a look at your morning rush. We are inching closer to sunrise here and with clear skies over the inland northwest. Yes, it's a little cool out there for this morning, but the sunshine is going to help to warm us up for today. And hopefully that means a return to the 50 degree mark because with the uh, cooler weather pattern for the first half of the week, we've only been in the 40s and in some instances our highs have been in the 30s. So a bit better for today should get close to that 50 degree mark. It'll depend on exactly how much sunshine we get over the weekend, Easter weekend, of course, but tracking rain 
rainfall for both Saturday and Sunday and several days on either side of the weekend. So we'll go in full detail of just how this weather, this rainy weather pattern is going to affect the Pacific Northwest in the coming days. New in the last 12 hours, Coeur d'Alene will soon have smoother roads. The City Council approved a nearly $700,000 contract to chip seal some of their roads. Many untreated roads in the city have started to crack. The plan is to repair these areas and have an outside contractor come in to chip seal the roads. So chip sealing prevents further cracking and extends a road's lifetime. In a perfect world, chip seal should be done every six to uh, 10 years. Uh, to treat the road. Um, we have not been able to do that. Um, so we look and see what we can uh, salvage as far as the condition. Uh, we want to try and get more life out of the roads. The development, the area we've looked at is uh, pushing 19 years old. City is targeting the northwest part of Coeur d'Alene to chip seal. These includes roads in the Hawks Nest and the Landings neighborhoods. The work will happen starting in June and take around three months to complete. Well, the time has come once again where Lime scooters can be seen zooming across Spokane. The electric vehicles held a partnership with the city of Spokane for five years now. So this morning, Crimtoo's Brandon T. Jones is standing or maybe riding by from yeah. Riverfront Park where the scooters and the e-bikes will be available later today. So Brandon, you showed off a little bit of your skills earlier, but I want to see some more and let it, while you're riding, let us know what we can all expect from these scooters. <laughs> Oh, well, I don't know what more I could show you. I'm not that talented. Come on now. I can't talk and, and give all the information and ride at the same time. Maybe I could, but I won't try, at least not right now. So I'm not just out here having a good time. Last time I was on the scooter, this time I'm on the bike. But this afternoon, starting at 12 and running until 2, there's actually going to be a safety training presentation opportunity to get to know a little bit more about these Lime scooters and bikes because they're here for the season. They just returned and they have some new upgrades. Uh, so I got a chance to speak with Lime and they told me that basically these new ones right here, they're upgraded. They have new technology, they have new improvements. And according to some of those Lime resources I spoke with, they uh, are uh, here for uh, quite some time and each one can now signal riders when to decrease speed and slow zones and also notify users of where they can properly park rather than just kind of dumping them off in areas that they're not necessarily supposed to be. Another new attribute are removable batteries. I'm taking a look at them right now. These removable batteries will make things a little bit more simple because they used to have to take each one of these to the warehouse and uh, that was a lot of, you know, man work you know that's a that's a lot of manpower these t this time around you know when they send some of their employees out they can just prop some of those batteries out and change them right there and then so it's going to be keeping a lot more of the scooters and bikes available folks in Spokane have taken 1.6 million rides on Lime devices since we launched in 2018 and so um What's special about these devices is really the ability for people to get where they need to go without a car. All right, so I don't know if you noticed, I was also wearing my helmet. That's something they're really pushing. But during the peak of the time, Lime scooters and bikes are available. About 1,700 devices are located around Spokane. And as for today, not only will these scooters and bikes be present, but free helmets will also be on display. You don't want to have your phone out when you're using these. All right, so um, I'm going to just ride around a little bit. So if you come out here today, this also coincides with the spring market. Hopefully, I'm not making the job too hard for our, our, our co-worker Al right now on, uh, on the camera because I'm, I'm just making my way around. Actually, I might like the bikes a little bit more uh, just because this reminds me of childhood a little bit. But yeah, if you want to come out here, get a free helmet, learn a little bit more about these scooters and bikes, that's going to be available from 12 to 2. I'll toss it back to you all in the studio. Brandon, Brandon. <laughs> he's having way too much fun out here. <laughs> you have some skill, man. You can you can read the news while riding a bike. <laughs> me, me, me. <gasps> I'd be heavy breathing. I'd have fallen <laughs> off already. <laughs> That's why safety first. Wear your helmet. <laughs>
<laughs> Brandon, thank you. All right, it is time for your wake up call from Lime Bikes and Scooters to Pizza. We're talking about National Deep Dish Pizza Day. We want to know what's your favorite type of pizza. And so many of you are writing in this morning. Clearly, Up With Creme viewers love pizza. People writing in, they love Sicilian pizza, barbecue pizza. Hey, this is a thing. There's no such thing as a bad pizza, duh. So Charity says that she loves thick crust and her favorite pizza is taco pizza. Thanks for writing in. Keep writing in and let us know what's your favorite type of pizza.